Welcome to the Epidecker session. Today's topic is basically ethical hacking using Python. Why do we use Python? The world's uh, fastest growing language. It's a language used by the masses and the classes both. And of course, it's very simple. But today's topic will basically touch on a very complex topic called as ethical hacking and what is hacking? And Python is only a tool. You could also do hacking using any other language which you're comfortable. If you could do with C hash, C, uh, C sharp, you could do with Java, you could do with SQL injection, a lot of methods. Basically, the methodology of uh, hacking is what we'll look at. And we'll also try to look at how Python helps a little bit, the OD features of Python. So what is hacking? Hacking is a word which is well known to all of you. And the word hacking has got both positive and uh, negative uh, connotations. But obviously, uh, the reason of hacking originally was not negative. But over the years, you know, it has taken both the terms. Now, three things have to be very uh, clearly explained. One is what is called as black hat hacking. One is what is called as white hat hacking. And this is a gray hat. So these three things have to be very clear. The white hackers or the pen testers are the people who get into systems with permissions and approvals, do checks and balances, test the systems, find vulnerabilities, threats, etc. And report it to the authorities under a very controlled environment. The black hat guys are obviously the guys you see in movies and you know all those stories about hackers kevin mittick and all that they are the guys who try to harm the system or get out information and data and you know take organizations to a very difficult uh, level the gray hat guys kind of stay between both that's very difficult to say where the black ends and where the white begins but gray hat typically are people who would be looking at systems because of their expertise who would understand systems and then probably who would also try to find out vulnerabilities and instead of exploiting them, they try to alert the authorities, the software vendors, and then uh, some cases there are rewards for alerting and they get paid. Some cases the vendors uh, accept it and uh, they release patches and updates. Generally the white hat guys and the black hat guys stay away from this kind of activity. The gray hat guys are bang in the middle of the road and that's what they try to do. And many vendors do respond and you hear patches and updates. Some vendors don't and then there are other consequences. We will come to hacking a little bit more in detail once we proceed. Basically, OOD stands for object oriented design. So when we say object oriented design, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to understand it's a, it's a software programming paradigm. The black hat guy is depicted here. And of course, the gray hat and the white hat guys you see in between. Python is an interpreted object oriented high level programming language with the dynamic semantics. See, basically, Python is third generation and it is interpreted as it is run. There is no compilation as such in Python. Of course, uh, being 3GL has its own advantages, but it is primarily a high level programming language. It is created by Guderosum in around 89 and it has been in use for about 30 years. But for the last five odd years, it has come up like anything, especially because of AI and all these things. It is object oriented, it is procedure oriented, it is high level language, it's easy to learn. As a matter of fact, uh, learning Python is one of the easiest things you can do. I mean, you can write hello world in just one single line compared to Java or, you know, C++, which takes three to five lines. And uh, a lot of good books on the internet. Features of Python, yes. Simplicity. It is designed so that you think more of the code and less of the syntax. Obviously, open source. Open source meaning that you do get data which is free for download. You go to python.org and you can download your own version for your system. Portability, yes, can be written in one and shared across others. Makes word sharing easier. Embedded and extensible. I mean, see, this is a beautiful part of Python. You can add codes from other languages, C, C++. As a matter of fact, SQL2 for databases, you can embed right into it and it will run it. Again, interpreted, I already mentioned this, tasks of CPU and memory are handled by Python itself. It's a pretty strong language, as a matter of fact, if you look at it from that point of view. Huge libraries. NumPy, Matplotlib, Psych, it keeps on adding. As a matter of fact, these libraries keep on adding and you can choose from a huge set of libraries as add-ons. You can do that. Yes, the OOP paradigm, object orientation helps break down uh, problems of the world to code and provide security to obtain better solutions. Now, because of its OOP, we will just touch up what are classes and objects. What's a class and what's an object? A class is basically a collection of objects. A class basically is a superset. The object is a subset. Now, when you say, for instance, a phone, it could be a rotary phone, it could be a touch phone, it could be a cellular phone, it could be just about anything, you know. And typically an object is an example of the class, such as a, in this case, a handset, a mobile phone, which has a state and some behavior. When we say state and a behavior, see, it has its own uniqueness, 
and it behaves in a particular way so that is a state and behavior methods again methods are functions that describe the attributes and behaviors of an object for instance if i say a parrot typically when you say a parrot it's an object the class is a bird and a higher class could be you know a vertebrates whatever the parrot when you first think about a parrot it flies that's an attribute it may be sings or it talks that's another attribute and it is green in color it has got a long elongated body two legs two wings and a head so there are the attributes and the behaviors similarly for a cellular phone there is a body there's a housing there's a wiring or a circuitry inside there's a casing there are buttons there's a screen so those are the behaviors and the phone is used typically for talking but of course nowadays cellular phones are used for much more than talking for browsing etc so this is the object the class and a method i hope this is pretty clear the next part is inheritance now inheritance we all study inheritance in one way in our schools in biology basically the child class the object inherits the habits or the behaviors of the parents so when we say a bird when you say a bird birds are classified in many different ways a parrot is an instantiation so the parent class has features which the child class of the objects do take it down polymorphism now again polymorphism it is the ability to exist in multiple forms a single function can have multiple functions for instance when we say okay in this example we are showing animal and deer and tiger so they are both animal but they have different features in case of the parrot for instance all birds can most at least 90% of birds can fly but all birds may not talk maybe most birds can sing or make some kind of a noise yes but parrots have a peculiar ability they learn to talk so that is something which a parrot has which maybe a vulture or maybe an eagle may not have so polymorphism means that it is a special feature the parrot belongs to the category birds but it also has its own feature as a talking bird that is one example of polymorphism encapsulation again a class it has got certain features which enables it to bind with the data for instance when we log into a office computer you are an user and typically when you log in there is a username and there is a password so the username and password is encapsulated together not everyone has the same no one has the same username and no one has the same password hopefully so when we get inside when you log in in a user system you log in with your id and you log in with your password so encapsulation is tied together this is a very rough definition of encapsulation abstraction now abstraction is basically simplifying when we look at you know a washing machine for instance there are a lot of components there is a housing there is a motor there is a drum there is a circuitry there is a water inlet and outlet etc filter etc but when we look at a very simple thing we do understand in a very simple way there is a power button there is a water level indicator there is a timer three things basically you switch it on water fills in you use to wash clothes and you waste on a time and then you, they are dry class water level definition see water level is high and medium now when we say high that is one state medium is another state and low could be one more state there is a time and a spinning associated with it typically there is a time uh, function there is a spinning function and there is an insertion function where you insert the clothes etc this is a very broad uh, definition of abstraction what can be a good career option hacking or ml using python see python is a very powerful language but i have used python for some time i have used java also i'm learning c sharp i i don't like c c++ nowadays and of course sql is one of my favorites i've been using it for 10 years and r as well it doesn't really matter which language you use but yes python being a third generation or a simple language it has a lot of advantages as we already saw and python libraries etc are powerful enough so we do get into a lot of advantages on python and python being simpler is used both for ai ml data sciences and hacking so it can be intermixed but it is always preferable to learn at least two to three languages don't stick only to python learn up java c sharp learn up uh, sql it's always good because you can embed and you can use tables for instance databases rdbms relational databases they're extremely powerful in sql family my sql db2 sql python may have those features but then if you can embed an sql based code into python it's even easier for you goals of ethical hacking see understand this very very clearly it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what tool you use and what methodology you use and what language you use basically what is important is the goal why are you into ethical hacking think very deeply the first thing is protect the privacy of the organization that has been hacked transparently report all the weaknesses inform hardware and software vendors of the weaknesses see this has a lot to do with something called as integrity compliance and ethics now these are very huge 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 subjects and we cannot 
take them very lightly when you are getting into it's as simple as you are going to somebody's house and trying to get inside the house and understanding the house and saying these are the vulnerabilities it is something which is a lot of responsibility it is something which requires a lot of trust lot of high integrity and lot of honesty so be very sure that you want to get into if you have those behaviors and traits and hacking is a very very difficult career it requires hours and hours of hard work and learning if you are able to invest your time and your judgment and your capacity it's a great field for you if you feel no this is not my kind of stuff and i'm better happy as a programmer or as a developer or as a coder that's a different story that is also good but once you get into the hacking remember that it is a lot about the trust between two human beings or two individuals one is you as a expert and one is the organization or entity for whom you are going to get inside and do this activity it is basically between two human minds so that is something you have to be you know be very sure it's not about machines it's about people end of the day everything is about people there is a person at one end and there is a person at the other end okay transparency report when you do as activity and you study all this you have to be very sure that you understand the systems you take help of experts sometimes you may not have all the skill sets you may have to call some experts who know or who, some vendors who might you know do some extra activities for you outsource it but the reports will be signed off by you and owned by you if you are given the responsibility and it is your duty your duty bound to transparently report all the vulnerabilities all the risks to the organization many times hardware and software vendors also will be involved they may be in loop with the organization or they may be with you you should also inform them that there are the weaknesses so these are the primary three goals protect be transparent and inform of ethical hacking why ethical hacking see information is valuable please remember that people get paid for information you may be wondering that sometimes you know you get this credit card people to call you or real estate agents to call you how come they get your number the fact is that somebody has given your number to them okay if you are leading a large company if you are a manager or a ceo or a small even a small business owner getting hacked i did not tell you this this is something which is all over the place just a week ago twitter accounts got hacked of lot of you know, famous people and all that you know so this is a serious business and many times it is not possible for the organization to figure out what the vulnerabilities or shortcomings are and this is exactly where your expertise comes in as a ethical hacker now the word ethical and hacking should always go together while riding a two wheeler always wear a helmet while crossing a road look on both the sides follow traffic signs while driving or riding on a road follow traffic rules they have to go together now what is a security threat what is a risk see this cyber security field is linked with two very uh, strongly related fields which are risk management and security engineering security engineering is a science of securing systems processes people beyond cyber security risk management is a science which has direct application on humans on business cyber security is a subclass so cyber security is directly borrowing both from security engineering and risk management and these terms of threats originate from risk and from security what is a risk typically when is a goal you have an objective or a goal for instance if i say that my goal is to go from my home to my office in 1 hour what are the risks risks is that i may not have my conveyance there could be a, a traffic problem nowadays of course in india you don't have traffic problems all cities are working from home so traffic is kind of reduced and automatically or for instance you say i may not get a cab or my two wheeler or four wheeler won't start so these are the risks so anything which adversely impacts directly or indirectly the goal is a risk and any risk that can harm is a threat for instance i say my goal is to study properly and score good marks when i don't study properly i play games i watch too much of movies i hang around with my friends of course nowadays i don't hang around physically but i may be playing online games and all that so those are risks which will affect my performance in exam so anything which advert effect is a risk the security threats typically are physical and non physical when we say cyber security do not think that everything is only digital lot of risks for instance server systems also have a physical risk somebody may come and you know do some harm plug out a few cables or you know insert some kind of malicious hardware which will harm it physically okay again just we are trying to show you physical threats for instance when you look at your home you know you you, you don't let open your door just to let anybody inside your home you you don't do that that is not what is intended to 
So you don't do that and you should not do that. The door, the door is for instance an internal uh, physical uh, risk. There are external risks, human risks, of course, people, you may sometimes in a, you find people who are you know, hacking into systems who are ex-employees or current employees. So it's not that everything physically has to be with a hardware system or a physical asset based proximity kind of a thing. It can be humans as well, okay? Non-physical threats, yes. Worms, viruses, trojans, spyware. These, these things are very much common nowadays and these terms have been around for at least 25, 30 years. A worm is something which comes inside a system and it does damage. A virus also does the same thing, but like a physical virus or a biological virus, it replicates very quickly and brings the entire system down. Trojans, these typically Trojans borrow from the, you know, Ulysses and the Trojan War, uh, Homer's uh, Iliad and the Odyssey, where uh, Trojan is a software or a system which masquerades or acts as if it is harmless and uh, it slowly activates and harms from inside. Spyware is basically that things which spy upon you and figure out what you're doing. Now, types of threats. We have kind of tried to show a very simple definition here. Viruses, lockups, identity theft, slow response, crashes, rootkit, worms, pop-ups, etc., etc. There are many, many more. But yes, these are just, you know, a simplification of what can happen. There could be threats like ransomware and many other things which we are not aware of. There are even threats which happen over Wi-Fi and wireless networks and all that. It's not always something which is wired onto it which we are uh, dealing here, but it's, it is possible. Yeah, and this portion, preventive measures. So once these risks and threats are there, how do you basically try to address them and how do you try to stop them? And the whole business of hacking, the whole business of cybersecurity is basically trying to protect somebody and helping them. Now, an organization must have logical security measures. It's a very broad definition. You know, even the Pentagon, the FBI gets hacked a few thousand times every day. The FBI website, the Pentagon, the US Department of Defense website gets hacked a few thousand times every day. So it is not that it is very simple. And you cannot tell that they are not serious about the cybersecurity business. They are. The United States government is. But that doesn't say that you can always be safe. There is something known as reasonable assurance. An organization must have some kind of cognitive cybersecurity. When you say cognitive, see cognitive cybersecurity, the word cognitive means you're able to think on your own. You should not believe and depend purely on somebody else to come and help you with cybersecurity. You should have cognizance, your own sentience, intelligence to figure out how do I handle cybersecurity. Authentication methods. There are a lot of methods. Typically, the simplest method what we look at is a user ID and a password biometrics smart cards etc but believe me everything which has been discovered can be broken and many of this uh, black hat hackers from from china or maybe from india or probably middle east countries and israel are very qualified people most of them have advanced degrees and many of them have a military background so uh, whatever you build there are always people thinking you and many gray hat and white hat hackers also are highly qualified people with a very adequate experience and qualification who figure out and help your job is to be the latter, to be a white hat hacker or a gray hat hacker. Your job is not to become a black hat hacker. Efficient systems, PDS, yes, it is possible. Typically, some measures we have shown here, human aspects, antivirus, spyware, firewalls, cryptography, dataware, encryption, there are a lot of other things. But this is what we're trying to look at. Which OS is better for hacking? See, an OS doesn't hack. An operating system is something which runs a computer you hack into an os you don't use a os for hacking so there's nothing particular as an os for hacking there are tools for hacking for systems hacking and for uh, wireless hacking but hacking is basically a set of activities to protect see it in that way so i will not recommend any tool but there are multiple tools freeware and paid tools how to know someone and hacked in you should be careful you should run your uh, security patches regularly and uh, you should have a good uh, security patch installed ai and ethical hacking see ai a machine learning and security ai is a huge science and it can be used together but it has got its own challenges you have to be very good in machine learning and ai there are clustering and methods and statistical tools and techniques and add-ons in python but it is like telling uh, can i use ai and ml for cyber security definitely yes but it is a bit tricky you have to be good in both the fields it is like you're a good football player and you're a good basketball player can i combine both yes but the question is you should know football and basketball that well. What is a logical security measure? You have a house. Logically, when you sleep at night, do you close your door? Do you close your windows? Do you lock everything? Or do you simply sleep? You will tell me that I lock it and I am sure that nobody has entered my house when I am sleeping. That's a logical security measure. 
these are some of the methods we recommend. End of the day, it's a lot of things on the safety and the persons in the system, they should be prepared. These are some methods, but remember, if people are not properly trained and uh, a, a short example I'll share, I used to audit across uh, different places in the globe, in Asia Pacific and US, and Germany and Australia and all that. I have many times we have seen when we go as auditors and we go to an employee and we go to an organization and then we sometimes ask the employees, can you show me, can you log into the system? And they do log in and sometimes we say, can you share your password? You will be very surprised. Many times people in that one day, they tell us our password. They tell us the password and say, sir, this is my password. And for us, that's a very, very, uh, you know, a funny situation. But then we have to tell the local management that this is something which is not acceptable. When somebody asks your password, would you give a bank password? Would you give a personal uh, Gmail password or a Yahoo mail password or hotmail password? No. You should have this end of the day, people can be defeated. These are all methods and checks and balances. But end of the day, the humans involved should be very, you know, I think lacking skills, HTML, JS, PHP skill, that and that, in In-depth knowledge. See, the whole game is not the language. It is not the system. It is the knowledge. Networking knowledge, system knowledge, computer knowledge. Knowledge is something which you have to develop. You have to spend hours, hours, and months, sometimes years. It took me a lot of time to understand. I'm telling my example. I'm a lot of friends from my uh, community who spent literally years. And after 12 years, I just think I know 5% or even less than 5%. It's a huge world. Uh, I have a computer science background. I have a information security background for 10, 12 years, but still I'm figuring out that after 10, 12 years, I've learned hardly 5%, hardly two to 3% maybe. So this is something which is a long-term thing. Today you can download, you can learn. This is a continuous learning process, okay? Why to learn programming? See, programming helps. Many people don't know programming and they're pretty good auditors as well. So it's not that you should always know programming, but programming helps. You know, knowledge of computer science, knowledge of operating systems, networks, wireless systems helps. Typically, and you can write good codes. I mean, I, I love writing codes in SQL. For example, one of my uh, favorite languages is SQL, and SQL creates fantastic code. It's by the way a fourth generation language. And for those of you who are already familiar with SQL or MySQL or DB2, you can write near English commands in, and you can do fantastic things. But there's something called SQL injection, for instance. It is a way where people write malicious SQL code to damage or destroy. You know, this drop command and delete command are very strong commands in SQL, and many people do write a time timer based code which gets into your system and doesn't get activated and one morning in fine morning it says a drop or delete and entire databases get erased that is what we call as sql i sql injection and that sql code can be embedded in python so there's a very tr tricky thing you should be careful you should know writing programs as a hacker see if you're a white hacker and you know programs you also know how to appreciate when somebody's written malicious code helps you identify and exploit errors definitely yes you can customize you can always strengthen many times people will say okay this code is not working can you help us you can guide them you, you may not code for them but you can guide their development team as to how to do it so we do recommend that learning uh, programming is definitely good for you. what are ethical hacking tools and again a lot of tools we are not recommending that you use these tools these are popular tools you just put for representation we are not endorsing that you use these tools only some of them xpar hashcat etc there could be many more some of them are free and some of them are paid Generally, be careful something which is free because sometimes you know you may download it for free and start using it. Tomorrow you find out that somebody has used that to hack into your system. You'll be happy practicing and somebody's getting your data. So be very careful about using these things and do this under controlled environments, under authorized environments. Okay. Generally, don't put a hacking tool in your home system. Be prepared to write off and dump the system if something goes wrong. And if you're using that system for financial transactions and all, God help you. So be very careful about all these uh, tricks and balances. Hacking is literally like playing with high voltage current or like be very careful. Be very careful. Even though you certified and authorized, be very careful. There's no replacement for safety and prevention. Okay. Social engineering. See, social engineering, many times this is a term you can always figure out. Social engineering is basically exploiting. See, we Indians, for instance, many of us in India, many of us in India, we love to talk, we love to chat, we love to hang out with people and friends. Many people actually use that information to figure out a lot of things about you. You may not tell anything. For instance, Somebody may join you and say he's a new employee, a new employee, and you know, like you just figure out, hang around with you, go for a drink, you know, go for a party and something, and gradually they will befriend you, and then they'll try to get information from you. And tomorrow you will find that that is being used against you. Sometimes over presentations, we discuss things loudly when we travel, when you're in a bus or you know, we are traveling on a train or a flight. We we discuss, we open up the moment a plane lands, we start calling people and say we have this form, this offer. Sometimes we open it up for this much amount your account. Be careful of these things. This is the art of social engineering. Be extremely careful. Hackers are not people who always hack into systems, hardware, and software systems. They are people who are very smart, who are sitting right next to you, looking at and they will try to figure out. Okay, so be careful. 
doesn't differ python and java skills to another you have to be very careful what you talk and you talk regarding information be extremely careful so they gather the information they plan it they use the knowledge which they get from you and then they attack you so typically they don't know anything about you and your system they befriend you they socialize with you they kind of mingle with you and get the information from you only that is something you should be careful techniques familiarity intimidating circumstances human emotions tailgating fishing tailgating you know already know this when you punch him and then somebody doesn't punch you or she follows you another one that's for tailgating some techniques again spear fishing wishing gather information over the phone spear fishing so these are all different english terms the methodology of information spear is your cpc has been infected please click this otherwise you lose all data these are basically spear yeah. sometimes you get this nigerian calls i will transfer million dollars to your account the nigerian guy will say the nigerian scam is the same then please give your password give an initial upfront money don't fall into all that trap be very careful sometimes people say i'm stuck in a particular place they may impersonate a friend or a colleague they may hack into his phone and impersonate and send message from his phone so be careful these are very uh, you know very very fine techniques the people who are doing are very intelligent people please be careful on this cryptography a very simple way we have tried to put it here it's a huge science cryptography has been around in humanity for uh, thousands of years it is used in europe from julius caesar's time and even before that the babylonians it is used in kautilya's arthur shastra and a lot of times in india the mauryan empire spies networks counter intelligence cryptography these are all related this is one example where we replace there are a lot of codes and ciphers we just showing one example plain text we take a text and we then use we, we put a we put an algorithm or we put a substitute each key and then we get into a plain text so uh, we have something called as two key and two factor secret authentication one to i send information to you and then uh, you receive it you can only decode it if you know the code otherwise it is useless to you that is the art of cryptography transferring information between point A to point B, so that a point C or anybody else cannot break into it. If they break into it, they cannot decipher it. It is used in military. It is there as a sign from World War II. It has come in in lot of other ways. These are some of the famous cryptography methods. Are they say uh, they are the world's top guys? Uh, Ron Rivest and you know Shamir and Adelman and all that. And AES and the, the latest one is Triple D S. That's the one. AES was used some years ago. SH is also one. RC4 is also one model. Typically, D S and RC4 are the advanced ones. is it also is and there are more uh, there is a science called quantum cryptography also which is come using quantum computing cryptography that's a very advanced science then there's something called as elliptical uh, curve cryptography where you use elliptical curves to use cryptography it's a stronger methods cryptanalysis again how to decrypt the data how to decrypt the data you get over here techniques we sometimes you know the dictionary method we substitute the words and then we try to say it here see python is available on the website called python.org FireEye, Darktrace, Silence, CrowdStrike. These are the world's top recent startups leading in cybersecurity. Darktrace, for instance, uses AI and cybersecurity. FireEye uses Crowd and Crowd Point. CrowdStrike is for endpoint protection. Visit these websites. You can note these names down: FireEye, Darktrace, Silence, and CrowdStrike. These are existing companies. I'm not endorsing these companies, but these companies are doing a lot of cutting-edge AI and cyber activities. Kaspersky, of course, Kaspersky India, and Kaspersky is one of the world's top firms in cyber. And uh, Eugene is luckily connected to me in LinkedIn. So Eugene Kaspersky is one of the world's top experts. He's a Russian guy, and the huge one. Attack. Mitre. Dot org. Uh, see, this is a non-profit organization. So what happens in Attack. Uh, Mitre is an organization where they do a lot of great work, try to identify uh, threats and lot of things in cyber, including hacking. And the Mitre has a Mitre matrix and enterprise matrix. This is a Mitre uh, homepage. Attack that Mitre. Attack is a framework which we use. You can see it here. And uh, for instance, for enterprise, these are these are very detailed areas for access, for execution purposes. And so these are privilege escalation discovery. These are collated based on best practices globally, and they have put it here saying these are the good things you should be doing, or these are the good things you should be careful, you should be watching out. So somebody is trying to hack. Chances are he or she is trying to exploit one of these techniques. They are tied with a lot of organizations and groups. A lot of good resources here, and uh, we have for mobile and enterprise. We have this uh, customized techniques. We have tactics, and these matrices are published. We have written it fantastic. But please remember, it may require some background. And of course, uh, I still recommend these are extra sites. You may know 
and uh, I'll show one more site here, and this is the NIST. The NIST is the US uh, National Standards Institute, and NIST also has fantastic framework from cloud and mobile and security. They publish frameworks and documents. They are a US government site, and they are one of the world's best standard sites. Uh, this is the NIST cybersecurity page. You can go to NIST and just hit topics. You get cybersecurity framework, privacy framework, risk management framework, and you get you can find some good cybersecurity framework and go here and then you click here. They have this uh, four five point method which they call as identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So you can and this this is downloadable. It's like it's a fifty or hundred page uh, document. You can actually literally go ahead and start reading. Nothing nothing is going to stop you. You can start reading, but this takes time. I've been reading this since last four five maybe seven years. I don't know maybe more than that. Takes time and these get constantly upgraded. So you have to keep upgrading yourself. Many of you said where to start. Start with it. Just start with, um, as I said, you know, meter Start with here and start reading and understanding. This may look initially a little intimidating, but it is definitely possible. And there's something called as compliance, risk management, and governance. So what is the OCEG? This is the FBI page, cybercrime. What the FBI does and all that. Yeah, in India we have these courses. We have DSCI, NASCOMS, so DSCI here, data security, Council of India. We have CERT India also. We have this also here. When you do a ethical hacking or a Python or whatever, you have to have a plan. You have to have an organization like a project plan saying what you will do, what are the checks and balances, where you will draw the boundaries, what you will check, what are the risks, what the clients want you to check, what is in scope, what is out of scope, then perform the activity, what you will be checking to what level of detail within what time frames, conduct the activity, then conduct the activity, then document it. Then you present the report to them, discuss with them, and you finalize the report. So this is something called the NIST uh, Forensic Framework. What we say is C E A R: collect the evidences, examine the evidences, analyze them, and then report them. But this has to be within a framework of a plan, like a project plan. Those of you who may have a PMP background or project planning background already know what a project plan is. So what is in scope and what is out of scope? What are the methodologies? And then that report has to be done, and that has to be documented and signed off from the client. Anyway, typically, if you're going to do it at home, obviously uh, you don't have that uh, expertise yet. But if you browse through DSCI cert, Mitra organization, and uh, the, the NIST homepage, many of you may be wondering that is it okay if you browse once? Please don't. If you have to browse through Mitra or uh, with uh, NIST or with DSCI, you have to browse for hours. So only when you spend at least two to four months understanding and reading these frameworks, you will be ready. Be dedicated and always. I will also in saying that go for a white hat or for an honest method. Have your integrity and moral side. Don't do activities which are illegal because if you are getting into too funny things, the government is able to snoop you out. So tomorrow morning, if you have a bunch of law enforcement people at your home or the police, it is not a very nice situation which we recommend. That is one reason we are not showing actual code here. Uh, we could have. We don't want to do that. That it's a legal risk on us as an organization. So that's about it. Uh, stay safe. Stay strong. Have a nice day.